Hi there. How often have you been asked to bring a dessert for a potluck meal? Or been strapped for cash but still want to get someone a special gift for the holidays? Fudge is an inexpensive alternative to fancy candy, but just as tasty and surprisingly simple to whip up. Let's look at our ingredients. Start by portioning out your ingredients and hardware. Three cups of chips. Today I am using white chocolate chips, but you can use milk, dark, or semi-sweet as well, or even a combination of any of the above. Butterscotch, however, tasty, does not melt properly and should be used as a mix-in, not a base. Three cups of white chocolate chips. Next, you'll need one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk and one stick of unsalted butter. Salted or sweet cream butter adds too much salt to the recipe. Set aside one cup of optional add-ins. This could be butterscotch chips, various nuts or berries, pretzel pieces, or other solids. You can also use flavored extracts to the tune of about a teaspoon. For the peppermint flavor in today's fudge, I'll be using Andy's peppermint chips. One cup. You'll also need an 8 inch square pan, preferably aluminum, and you'll need to have that greased. I'll be using Pam cooking spray. Why we use disposable aluminum foil is so that you can cut through the foil when you're cutting the fudge for portioning. Put the butter white chocolate chips and can of sweetened condensed milk the sweetened condensed milk is very thick and I would recommend using a spoon or rubber spatula to remove as much as you can from the 14 ounce can. Once they're in a microwave safe bowl, zap them in the microwave on high for one minute. Stir to combine. If not completely melted, put in the microwave for an additional 30 seconds or until melted. This looks about perfect. You should notice the fact that it's a little velvety on top in color, and it appears to be almost a little taffy-like. That's normal and is how it's supposed to look. Let's go back and add in our mix-ins. After completely melted, add in the peppermint chips, stir to combine. The heat will melt them, but in order to keep the pink color running through, you don't want them to be completely melted into the fudge base. Notice the pink flecks of color running through the fudge. Sometimes, if it turns all pink, it kind of can't be avoided. That's okay, it'll still taste delicious, it just won't have those stripes of color of pink. It'll just be mostly pink instead.
Once it's completely mixed together, and it should look something along these lines, pour it into your eight inch square greased dish. Remember, this can be very hot, so be careful. At this point, you can use another small rubber spatula to get off the remainder of fudge that's stuck on your large mixing tool. Once in an 8 inch square, put into the refrigerator uncovered. Let it chill until it's set and firm about two hours. Thanks to the magic of TV, two or so hours have elapsed. And fudge is set. Carefully slice by using a large blade. Start by cutting the corners of the aluminum foil pan. If you have soft countertops like mine, it may be best to work on a cutting board. Place the corners and fold down the side like so. This will make slicing 10 times easier. Once your sides are flat, cut eight rows and then eight rows for a total of 64 one inch pieces. One recipe should yield 64 pieces. Unless of course you want them larger. And that's it. Simple, fun, and delicious. This versatile fudge recipe is great to make for a romantic evening, a fun party, or just with young little kids. As someone who's been using this recipe for over a decade, I can assure you that the fudge will come out perfect every time if you just follow the recipe.